Hey guys, it's Aaron. So if you have been using SketchUp for any amount of time, you have probably sooner or later stumbled upon the 3D Warehouse. Some people spend a lot of time getting files and posting files there. Some people just uh, dip their toes in the water. One of the most common questions we always get though is, how do I know if a file is good? And there's not a simple answer to that. But I figured I would spend today's skill builder running through a couple things you can quickly identify when you look at a file from 3D Warehouse. So with that, we will hop right in. All right, so I went ahead and searched for the term couch and I found a bunch, over a thousand files here called couch, but I didn't want to call out anybody in particular for being good or bad posters on 3D Warehouse. So we're going to look at these two right here posted by this guy. Now, Right up front, here's one thing that uh, people don't always think about. If you're going to post a file up to 3D Warehouse, you want it to be useful to others, go ahead and name it something that makes sense and is useful. If you're posting a couch to 3D Warehouse, don't call it Red Car. Sometimes we see this kind of thing where the names have nothing to do with what's actually being posted and uh, it means messy search results. So. That one should kind of go without saying, but I said it, so here we are. All right, so I do have these two couches that are very similar to each other. In fact, based on the thumbnail, they look almost identical. What we're gonna do right now is just click into each of them and just from 3D Warehouse, see if there's any red flags as to which couch is better than the other. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on this couch A and get a view of it. All right, so when it comes up, it's a picture of a couch. I can look over here and I see some information, basic information about it. Uh, one thing right here is this does have 32 materials. Uh, it's a red couch. I wouldn't think that it would have that many materials. If I click through, I can actually see, okay, yeah, there's a bunch of materials here, some, some metal. <laughs> That's an odd one. I don't see that. Oh, and look at here. Here's a, here's a giveaway. I have some mark colors. So this this model contains default information like the colors of Mark, the facing component for the version of SketchUp that was used to create it, but it also has some things like these metal textures and aluminum textures and all these other colors. That's, that's, that's suspect. It's a reason to be thought, thinking of maybe why is this guy right here putting all this stuff in here? The other thing is file size and polygons. Now, there's not a number that is a good number of polygons for a given model, and there's not a bad size of a file for any specific model, but it's something to look at. So this right here is 23 megabytes. It's over 60,000 polygons. Now it is a curved shape. I do have some nice round cushions in here, but uh, that may be excessive. I don't know for 100% sure, but uh, it's something to keep an eye on. If we go back and look at the other couch, let's look at couch B. Just click on that. And again, very similar thumbnail, almost the exact same. But if I look at this right off the bat, two materials. All right, 355K, that's significantly smaller than the last one. And 887 polygons rather than over 60,000. So again, side-by-side -side comparison shows that this, this file, this second one, is probably gonna be a tighter model, even though it looks pretty much the same as the other file. Now here's a big thing, downloading the file. I can access 3D Warehouse from inside SketchUp, no problem. And it's a great way to grab models that you have, you already know, and you've vetted, and pull them directly into a model. When you hit download, it's gonna say, do you wanna download it directly? You have the choice of putting it right in the model that you're working on, or you can download it and take a look at it first. Always, unless you know the file you are downloading is exactly what you want and it's usable, I would recommend against putting it in your model. The problem is if I do download a big model into what's already a big model, I can overwhelm SketchUp. Depending on your capabilities of your computer, you might be just pushing too many polygons at it. So I always recommend download it, open it first before you drop it right into a working model. So I've done that. I've gone ahead and I have downloaded both Couch A and Couch B. And what we're gonna do is run through these models and look at what could be tells as to the quality of this model. So we'll start over here with Couch A. So first thing I generally do when I import a model is click on it and, whoa, first thing I'm seeing here is loose geometry. 
All right, so it doesn't look like it's it's riddled throughout, but I do have this right here showing up as geometry, whereas these pieces are showing up as uh, groups or components. If I click over here on group A, I get one big container. That's a good sign. If I double click to enter that container, I have separate pieces. So this is already constructed a little bit better, I can see, than this one over here. If I go ahead and look at my entity info, I can click on these pieces and see this is a component inside here. Each of these are components. They're solid components as well. That's usually a good sign as well. That means it's probably pretty well constructed. So each of these pieces is a solid component. If I click into one, that's all that's in there. That's that's a good sign. If I click over here, I got a group, I got a component. These two are the same and they're separate. One's a component, one's a group. That's not a good sign. Uh, solid component and then of course this is just a surface. Um, something else you may have noticed that this model over here doesn't have an axis, this one does. This is not necessarily a good thing or a bad thing. This is just something that happens. I tend to feel good about an axis in a model because I know where this is relative to the origin. So when I go to place this model as a component, I'm going to be placing it by right here. I don't know where it is over here. So I could be placing it by a point way over here or something like that. So generally just a, a feel good thing to have that there. All right, so one of the things you remember from couch A was all the materials. If I bring up my colors and I look at the colors in model, over here is all these materials. Over here in this model, I have two. So this is a lot nicer. I like this. Um, I like this model over here. This right here is a lot. And, and one of the things I think I see as an issue is if I zoom in, look, look at this is right here. Here's Mark. So I don't really need a standard, generally speaking, I don't want this extra geometry in my model. So usually I want to see a model without the face me component in it. But the other thing that this indicates is this is a big couch. Assuming Mark hasn't been shrunk, that means we have a uh, bigger than a football stadium size couch right here. Uh, if I just go ahead and just check a dimension, just arbitrarily, what is the bottom of this couch? You can see that that is 100, 1,466 feet wide. That's a big couch. You come over here, and I don't know exactly what the exact dimension of this uh, couch is supposed to be. I'm just kind of getting my bearings here, but if I pull a line across here, uh, it's a little over six feet. So that seems a little more reasonable. That seems correct, more correct. So these are all indications of what is the ideal model. The other thing that I always take a look at, and this is a big consumer of resources, is components. If I click on components, the components is gonna show me all the pieces of this model. So over here in our couch B, there's a big component at the top, it's named component, not ideal, but not a deal breaker. And then I have couch back, couch base, couch cushion, couch leg, all the different pieces are actually named. That's all that's in the model. If I click over here on couch A, I know you guys are already like prepping for it. Here it comes, big list. If I click on couch A, I see a whole bunch of stuff. So for some reason, I have a 3D motherboard in here and a bicycle, along with my cushion, component number one. This is usually a, a flag for me. You guys know I'm not great at naming my pieces, but I really try to make sure I have a real name in there. Uh, here's a cussion, different from my cushion. I have a leg and of course I have Mark and for some reason Susan's in here as well. So this is a good indicator. This means that this file probably wasn't purged before it was uploaded. Purging is something that SketchUp will automatically prompt you for when you upload a 3D warehouse in the newer versions. Uh, this would probably indicate that either this model was created before the newer versions which prompt you to purge before upload or they just skipped over and said no. Don't purge it. The other way to do it, of course, is to create the model and manually go to 3D Warehouse and upload it from there. That would not purge. So regardless of why it happened, there's a bunch of extra stuff in this model that is not in this model. And one of the big ones, so one of the big, if I want to look and see what is this model made of, one of the big things I look at is looking at hidden geometry. So if I go to view and turn hidden geometry, so in this model, especially with curved models like this, I can see exactly how much geometry I'm dealing with. Come over to this model right here. 
view my hidden geometry here, this is a big piece of why this model is so much bigger than this model. And this is not to say that this is bad necessarily. Uh, a dense model like this might be great if you're going to do something like some rendering. If this, if this couch is going to be right up front and center in your model, maybe this is what you want. I'm going to put some leather on here, have some shine. I want these nice smooth curves. That's okay. If this is just a piece that is in your model, this is just set dressing to indicate that a couch goes here, something like this on the right is going to be the better model. It's light, and when you turn off hidden geometry, it's pretty hard to tell these two apart just with the softened uh, corners of SketchUp. So there we go. That's just a handful of things you can keep an eye on when you're downloading through your warehouse. It's not a comprehensive list. It's not absolutely everything. And of course, the big thing is that what's important to you is going to differ from the next person. So if you're downloading for rendering versus this couch is going to be one little piece off in the corner of my model, your standards for what is an acceptable model are going to change. Hopefully that's helpful though. Hopefully you picked up a tip or two on how to evaluate a SketchUp model when you go to download it for use from the 3D Warehouse. If you like that video, go ahead and give us a like down below. And if you want to see more videos like this, click subscribe. We tend to release a video or two every single week. And if you subscribe, you'll be notified when the next one comes out. Most importantly though, leave us a comment. Let us know what we did well, what we could improve on, or what ideas you have for these skill builder videos. We like making these videos a lot, but we like them a lot more when they're showing something you want to see. Thank you.